So hi, good morning, and my name is Hannah, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to talk about how to use Go for mobile platform. Okay, so let me start with a question. How many hours a day do you use your smartphone? In my case, a lot. So as a Go user and software engineer, it's natural to ask myself, okay, can I use Go for my mobile app? Actually, it turned out I was not the only one. It turned out mobile support was one of the frequently requested features. And some brave users from Go community, they even tried and built their own Go binaries for Android with Seagull external linking through NDK toolchain. That all sounds like magic to me. And Go 1.4, actually, that is the first version that mentions Android in its official release note. But even before Go 1.4, some brave Android, some, yeah, some users, they released Android app that use Go. For example, Brad Fitzpatrick's company store has Android app. It actually has Go binary in this package and use it as a sub process. And so Java UI communicate with the Go process that does interesting thing. And there were even more brave person, like uh, Elias Neuer, like uh, he modified the Go toolchain and runtime to use Go as a shared library. And on top of it, Go Android and Andrea Fazes Mandala, yeah, that kind of framework became available for Android app development. But you had to use uh, the hack the runtime. So knowing all this desire and demand, around this time last year, David Crochet from Google tried and uh, like, uh, he tested and like, proposed the mobile project and then started mobile project under golang.org x mobile repository. The goal of this project was, is <laughs> to bring Go to mobile platforms. Why do we care? Go has been known great for server programming. If we can program mobile app using Go, we can use basically Go to program a complete system from server to the end user client mobile app. That is great. And also we can write a single cross-platform Go library to the interesting job and then we can use almost everywhere. And also, we can bring a simple language that we love, Go, and development toolings to mobile platform. That is fantastic. So, in this project, we actually are thinking of, we, we are envision two ways of using Go. The first one is native Go app, where you can write the entire app using Go. You can write game, or you can write, I don't know, some like uh, interesting graphics apps. But it requires uh, the availability of Go packages to handle graphics, or event handling, or audio, or like a variety of things. And maybe some users think, oh no, I want uh, some apps that look like real iOS app or Android app. How can I do that? I still want to use Go. So this SDK app, the second one, that is actually the solution for that. You write Android UI in Java or iOS UI in Objective-C or Swift. And then you can write the common interesting feature in Go and use it as a library. I will describe each one like in more, de yeah, more detail later. First, let's start with the native Go app. So you write everything in Go. The first challenge in this domain is basically to provide cross-platform APIs. We are not talking only about the Android. We want to support iOS and future mobile platforms. And so these APIs must work for Android, iOS, and desktop environment. Right? What? Desktop, it's a mobile talk. The reason that we care about desktop is first, it will make our app development process much pleasant, much more pleasant. 
Just imagine that you build, run, test your app from your desktop, and then deploy it in the mobile device. Magically, it works. That will be really good. And also, you will put a lot of effort to develop this Android app and iOS app. For your app. And why do we waste all this effort? You can build the desktop version for that app. So that is the reason that we care about desktop environment. And also, we have to provide a rich set of APIs to be useful for the real serious app development. And also, we want this API to be written following idiomatic Go style. And to promote, yeah, we want to promote the idiomatic Go style for the mobile app development. We don't want the user to write Java in Go or Objective-C in Go. We want user to use real Go program in Go. OK, demo time. <laughs> Let me show you yeah, the program that I wrote for this GoForCon. OK, mm. this is uh, less than 200 of lines of code, including the comments and space. It's a very small, tiny, simple program. You can run like any other Go program. Go run. Ta-da! <laughs> OK. <laughs> so the graphics library and app package that tenders all this windowing and the, like, uh, painting the color, and also using the standard image library, I plotted the disco fur. And hello? Did you hear hello? Yeah, there is audio package that can play sound whenever I click. And the gopher moves. Uh, Following my mouse. OK. Well. So this is two, less than 200 of lines of code that uses the packages from the mobile sub-repository and standard image library. And I don't use any Java, Objective-C, or C in my code. You can do this. And. So currently, what is available in the repo repo mobile repository, we have this app control, asset management, OpenGL, event, screen geometry. And under experimental directory, we uh, are experimenting with audio, including open AL binding and system font to the rendering sensor. Now list is growing. The second challenge is, OK, I showed the desktop app. It's a mobile talk. Where is the mobile app? How can you build? Well, have you ever built the NDK, Android NDK app? How many? Yeah, I tried a long time ago, and it was not that pleasant. <laughs> and if Go is involved, it will become more complex. So you have to, you, you would have to deal with the tool chain installation, cross compilation for all the mobile platform, the combination. And you have to deal with the Android, uh, iOS specific build details, There's gazillions of them. And that is not very fun. So give up? No, not yet. We have a Go Mobile tool. You can go get this tool. And basically, the purpose of this tool is to simplify the tool chain installation and app build and deployment. After downloading, and building this app, uh, the Go Mobile command, just to run Go Mobile in it once to install the Android iOS compiler tool chains. And then to build Android APK and an iOS app, run Go Mobile build. You can specify the target platform, Android or iOS. So let's make this Hello Buffer app a mobile app. So I now use Go Mobile. Install command that is basically a shortcut to run, yeah, to build and deploy to my Android phone. I prepared, so I will, uh, for presentation, I will mirror uh, my mobile phone screen here. Okay, let's run this command. The uh, 
new build of resource. <laughs> okay, so I think hello, yeah. Sorry. Uh, 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 uh. Why does it take so long? Oh, it's done. It's too fast. So this is under hello package name. So there is a hello app here. Yeah. So can you see it? Yeah. And uh, the sound doesn't. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, it keeps saying hello. Okay. To move on. But still, some people want more. <laughs> like, uh, okay, I already have a beautiful Android app or iOS app, but I still want to use Go to add a new feature. Or I want to have a more native uh, mobile app like Look. What should I do? So here is the SDK app story. Did you hear the news that with Go 1.5, we can build a Go program as a library that can be used by non-Go programs. That means we can use Go from Java or Objective-C. So for to use, the, to use a Go library from Java, we can build a shared library with the build mode equals shared. And iOS doesn't support this dy dynamic link. I, I mean, it's not possible to dynamically link uh, for iOS yet. So in this case, we create archive file for static linking. And the, all the Go functions marked with export C Go annotation that can be callable from different languages. Actually, all this work was done based on a beautiful document, a roadmap documentation written by Ian Lance Taylor. And so for the details, uh, check out this execution mode uh, like a doc documentation. So now we have all the tools. Like uh, from C, we can call Go functions. And Java has a J and I, so that you can call C function. And Objective C, that is a superset of C, so you can call this a C function. So we have all these Lego blocks to build everything, right? But still, manually mapping data structures and functions between these languages that is tedious and error prone. So the answer, our answer to this problem is a tool, go bind the tool. You can go get this tool, but later I will tell you better solution, by the way. So <laughs> basically the purpose of this tool is automate language bindings through code generation. What it means is you write a simple Go package and this tool will generate the language bindings from exported Go APIs of this package. There is no expli explicit annotation. There is no special syntax, just the right to Go program. And then this tool will, tool will take care of it. But there is one caveat. Like uh, currently, we don't support all possible Go types. We support only subset of Go types. So you have to design the, you have, when you design the Go API for this use, you have to think uh, and then see the list of supported types. But we plan to expand the list of supported types, so yeah, stay tuned. And so let's see what is currently supported. Currently we support the basic types, error bindings, and the functions that use basic types and errors in their API. I have a Go, API, a Go package, my package that defines hello function that returns a string and error type. And if we use Go bind tool to generate Java language binding, it will, build, it will create my package Java class that has a static method hello that returns Java string type. And the second return type error will be translated as Java exception. Unfortunately, Java doesn't understand the multiple return value types, uh, return, multiple return values. So there is a limit on the number of uh, return values so you can return from your Go API. 
0, 1, or if you want to return 2, then the second one must be the error type. And we can also create Objective-C API binding. And Objective-C doesn't have a concept of a namespace or module, so we had to come up with some prefix based on the package name. So here, go my package prefix. And also, we try to follow the target language's uh, convention as much as possible. So to support, uh, so, so the uh, error is translated into the NSA error type, but we cannot, uh, we don't want to, uh, they don't recommend returning this NSA error type uh, directly. So instead, uh, they recommend use, uh, to use a Boolean type to indicate whether the function failed or succeeded. And then if the cooler wants, <laughs> Cooler wants to know the error detail. Wait a minute. Then they can pass NSA error object, and then this function will fill in the detail based on the return the error, error value. It's complicated, but it's uh, how Objective-C works. And even you can bind the struct types. Here is my counter struct that has a exported the field value and struct method inc. And there is a helper function new counter that returns counter object. With the go bind tool, you can uh, generate a Java binding. And this counter struct is uh, mapped to the nested class counter. And the method is also mapped. And also, in addition to this uh, the struct method, for each exported field, we generate getter and setter. And then you can use this class like, uh, yeah, you can use the, this uh, object like uh, any other Java object. So you can pass object uh, between languages. So Java has GC, Go has GC. How can they live together? That is a difficult tr problem. But underneath the, the, this, the generated code, there is some mechanism to track the object crossing the language boundaries. And so that actually makes sure that while one language keeps the pointer to the object in another language, so make sure that the, the other, the original object can survive. So it, this is not very complicated, but if you want to build right from the scratch, that it is a pain, but go bind the tool will take care of it everything for you. Similarly, you can generate Objective-C bindings, and you can use uh, the object, the Go object, like any other Objective-C object. So now we have Java code and Objective-C code. What should I do? There are so many files. Well, OK, you ran Go bind. You now have to cross-compile some of the file and copy several files around for right to direct, right to direct yeah, uh, for each platform. And also there is SF files you have to remember. It's very complicated. But do you remember Go Mobile Build Tool? Same. Here we, we have the same answer. We have a Go Mobile Bind command to simplify all the build process for this SDK app. For example, for, Go, uh, uh, for Android, this Go mobile bind command generates language bindings, basically calls this Go bind command, and compiles Go code to a shared library, and also compiled the generated Java code with the Java compiler, and then bundles everything into a Android archive format file, we call that .aer file. So, oh, no. Ah. So here is my package. I have one Go file with some asset files under asset directory. 
CSS simple file, and Go Mobile Binder to also compiles the Java generated Java code. So we have to tell the tool where the Android SDK is located. So you have to specify this environment variable, Android Home, and then run Go Mobile Bind. There is my package.aar file. And basically, this is just a simple zip archive that packs all the artifacts. So we can inspect that. There is Android specific configurations and compiled jar file, and the SFI is included, and libgojni.so, that is output of Go build uh, C shared mode. Okay. And so, yeah, that AR file. What can you do with this? Most of modern Android ID system can handle this that AR format library. So even they have a UI just to click and import. And in order to build this, uh, update this uh, library, now at this moment you have to build this, uh, you have to write a build a script or configure some Gradle plugin. But we envision that in the future it will become, yeah, the Android Studio can do, like, uh, can work for this. And now we are currently working on it. So, have I ever used this tool for? Mobile app development. Actually, I'm user of this Google Mobile Bind tool. Actually, recently I built a, a new app called Ivy. Ivy is a command line tool developed by Rob Pike. And it's basically a useful desktop calculator that handles big integer, rational, and floating point number vectors and matrices. And this is a screenshot of IV command line tool. And I truncated because the last one, two star star 6,400, that is basically two to the 6,400, it's a big number. So I didn't want to print. It is, in fact, not a trivial calculator. It is an interpreter for an API-like language. For the details, check out the Wikipedia. There is a like a comprehensive documentation. And also, Rob has a video on his demo. So after seeing his demo, I was so excited. Can I have it for my mobile app? No, it's a 5,000 5, of lines of Google code, excluding test and documentation. And it also has dependency on math, uh, math bit, math render, Unicode, and variety of standard packages. I don't want to rewrite everything in Java or Objective-C from scratch. So what, what, do, what could be my answer? <laughs> Go mobile, find. So I slightly modified the Rob's code so that I can call this, uh, I can use it as a library, and then ran Go mobile, bind, and also built some simple UI with the Java. And then after two hours, I got a working prototype. Later, I was excited. I went to Rob's office and asked, wow, yeah, it's good. Now the, it, your code is running on Android phone. And then later, Rob asked, why did it take two hours? He wrote most of the code. So, OK, <laughs> fair. Yeah, because Java is, my, is not my everyday language. And also, I traveled with my toddler, two and a half year toddler, who was uh, asking for attention continuously while I was working on this. So two hours, that is not bad. In the meantime, David Crochet from our team, yeah, he independently started the iOS version of this app, same process. And then after a couple of days, we had both Android and IB, uh, the iOS version. I just video recorded for demo. I don't have much time. The rightmost one is uh, my iPhone screenshot, and the middle one is uh, Android, and I have a command line tool. Just uh, quickly. Yes. Yeah, vector calculation. Yeah, same answer. <laughs> Two to the six. 
Wow, <laughs> big number. Yeah, anyway, so if you want to, you can come and then see the demo running on my phone. Anyway, so. <laughs> so the lesson I learned is, okay, it's really good to write to the interesting feature once as a library in Go. And then you enjoy great language features and packages available in Go. And now you have time to focus on user experience and improvement of UI and also improvement of the core library. You don't have to deal with all this uh, like language bindings or Go and such. So Go, bind, Go Mobile Bind tool will take care of that. So it's almost the end of my talk. And before ending, I want to recap where we are and where we want to go. In Go 1.4, we announced the Android support. And we have Android Builder that continuously tests all the tests from standard library. And Go Bind tool was uh, released and uh, became available for Java language binding. And we also had some cross-device app development the, uh, the packages for cross-app de device applications. And now go 1.5, Minux Ma, open source contributor, he did an amazing job. job. He finally merged his iOS support, the port to the main repository. So we will have experimental support for iOS for both ARM and ARM64. And David Crochet also set up iOS, iOS Builder. So set the test from standard library, they will be continuously being tested. And as I mentioned before, the shared library support, now we can call Go function from foreign language in a clean way. And Ian, Tell, yeah, Ian Les Taylor and Michael Hassando, Sorjan Petrovic, and David Crochet, and many open source contributor to work for that. Yeah, thank you very much. And Go Mobile repository is getting better. We have this build story, Go Mobile tool, to simplify all the build process. And we also extended the Go Bind tool to support Objective-C binding. And we are also experimenting various of packages to enhance the list of the supported packages. So after Go 1.5, what do we want to do? Actually, this is uh, basically my to-do list. Now, it's not uh, listed in particular order, and it's not the exhaustive list. We want to improve our graphics library packages, and we also want to work on the UI packages. David Nigel from Sydney, Google Sydney office, and David Crucial is, uh, yeah, they are working on this, and also open source contributors. Yeah, your opinions, very welcome. Contribution, very welcome. And we want to sub, uh, provide more APIs for pure Go app development, testing, profiling, debugging. Now we have basic features working, so we need to test profile debugging. Uh, and also we, want, we plan to support more platforms and richer type support for Go Bind and ID integration. Basically, there are many small, tiny things, but we need to make these little things work together for solid mobile platform support. While preparing for this presentation, for fun, I created this word cloud based on the change list, uh, authors, and reviewers. David Crucial, our TL, and Burju Dogan, JBD, and Nigel Tao, me, yeah, we mostly work on mobile stuff. But in addition to like, these four people, like, there were hundreds of uh, contributors. Without their help, we couldn't make it work. We will not be able to make it work better. So thank you very much, and this is uh, the end of my talk.